which we made in Skillshare. So we will be uh, demonstrating and having a code walkthrough and we'll be uh, explaining about all the implementation we did on this app called MyCMD. So this is the agenda for today. And uh, so this is the app which we were which we implemented connect my doc. So it is a solution for practicing tech uh, telehealth and telemedicine. So basically the patients uh, will be able to send uh, appointments to the app and the doctors can view and reject appointment manage them. There will also be a dashboard where they can see how many appointments have come through. They can also uh, reset days off where they have to get off. So appointments won't be booked for that day. So it is basically for appointment management. And they can also connect virtually and have talks with patients. It will also hold patient profiles with multiple uh, patient details like their health histories. So it makes it easier for the doctors to diagnose the patients. So next to this is the prototype of the app. So this is the dashboard where we have a top dashboard uh, here where the uh, to today's appointments and the total appointments and the canceled appointments are displayed. Down we have a card of all the patients who have booked an appointment here. We can either accept or reject an appointment. Uh, all the accepted appointments are displayed with a message and a call box for the doctor to contact them. And a reject appointment is just cancelled and it is shown in the dashboard. And the next thing is we have here is the patient list. This has all lists of patients irrespective of if they have accepted or rejected the appointment. Every patient who has registered with us will be here. We can also search the patients and get them. So this is the patient details page which will hold all the appointment histories and the patient details all the information about the patient and their uh, health histories and symptom histories here. From the patient uh, profile page, the doctors can also uh, give prescriptions to the patients. Here we have a form for them to fill the prescriptions. We have like medicines which are predefined and which can be given here. Once this is added, we can download it from uh, through as an Excel file from the patient details page itself. Can be downloaded from here after it's added to Azure Blob. With a business and functional modules. So we have implemented two microservices appointment service and patient service. It is a completely different and detached from each other. We will be combining both the services and using the APIs in the front end to send and receive uh, calls and data. This was a project work workflow. First we were given the requirement and then we were given a doubt log to be made. Then we had to understand the requirement properly. Then we made an architecture of all the design. Then we went into the implementation of the code and we and we did unit testing after the implementation. It was released first. Uh, then we, there was a code quality check. We had a few bugs to solve and then there was a second final release and then now we are done with it. So this is the project dashboard. We have around 25 plus features with three screens and we have spent around 280 hours plus hours developing this and we have over 10,000 plus lines of code in .NET and uh, Angular and JavaScript. So these are can, the... uh, sorry, can, if you can go to the previous slide, please. This is Tani here. Okay, you said 280 plus dev hours. That is uh, how many developers? Seven. Yes. Seven developers. Seven. Okay. 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 So, uh, this is the key features of what we have implemented. Now, my friend uh, Prashant will take over about the enterprise architecture. Thank you, Madhu. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hope all of you are fine and healthy. I will explain the enterprise architecture which we use in the wagon. We use the Onion architecture. As per the traditional architecture like third tier and end tier architecture, the UI layer interact to the business layer and the business logic talk to the data layer directly. All the layer are dependent heavily on each other. None of the layer is independent. Such systems are very hard to understand and maintain. They are tightly coupled to each other. So we use the onion architecture to solve this problem. It is based on the inversion of control principle. 
it is comprised of multiple concentric layer interfacing towards the core that represent the domain as we shown in the diagram this there is a core where the domain layer and outside there there is a domain service and outside the domain service there is a application service and there is a user interface outside that only the outside functionality can connect to the inner one not the any inner functionality dependent on the outer one the advantage of this onion architecture is that they are loosely coupled and the internal layer never depend on the external layer it is easy to be easy to testable go to the next slide okay. Yeah. Next thing is uh, we are explaining that we use in our project the Azure Blob Storage. The Blob stands for the binary large object. It is a feature of Microsoft Azure. It allows us to store the large amount of unstructured data on the Microsoft Data Storage platform, which includes the objects such as images, multimedia files. In our case, we store the Excel files. We can also fetch this file whenever we need it. Uh, the unstructured data is that they do not follow any particular model. Like we have the snapshot in this, we use the Azure Blob Storage Services to upload the blob and to download the blob from the Azure Blob Storage. Next slide. Can hold on to the snap I'm sorry. Can you go back to the previous slide? No. I want to understand. Uh, have you considered any other options other than Azure Blob? or Azure Blob was the uh, only solution that you tried? No, no, sir. We can also store in, in our system file to store in the file system. But uh, when we store the large data, na, we use the Azure Store Blob. It is okay. e easy to maintain, to, get, to fetch the file and to upload yes, the file. I understand that. Uh, is there any other option you tried for storing a large volume of data other than Azure Blob? No, no sir. OK, have you done any authentication? Uh, because since Azure is being a public, uh, publicly available, so this Blob storage URL, I can access it from outside world. How are you stopping an external person uh, accessing uh, your patient data? We use the one SES token to update or delete. We use after this link, this account name, we use the link na HTTP UP net Angular 221. We also use that SES token. Without the SES token, we cannot upload. Okay, or so download. which means uh, one in any of your configuration, you're still storing as a plain text, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so if I have an access to your config file, I can access your blob storage. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Sir, ideally, so it has to be in the environment, but. It in the yeah, but there are multiple ways to do it. Uh, I was wondering uh, if you have you know, the concept of Azure Vault, Key Vault, so that you can store the securable step. Fine, no problem. I don't want to stop. Move it. Okay, sir. This is the snapshot of the Azure Blob, where we use the container CMD Genova, and inside they, we store the file like that. CMD pre the in the name of the patient ID and the date and after that we have to mention the time. Now I will invite to my friend Yashwan to continue from here. Thank you, Prashant. Before Thank just you. give me one minute before before we continue. Uh, I would understand uh, if you guys been introduced to Azure Key Vault. Are you securing Azure uh, contents? I just want to understand that if that's been part of your training. Uh, no, sir. We have been told about no, as Fine, great. It's more. Uh, so I'm Ishan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, talking about the uh, microservice architecture. So, in an application, uh, we'll be breaking down into small pieces and helping uh, them work together. Uh, so it helps us to make our application simpler to be and maintain. So. Uh, with this, uh, using microservices, we have uh, we can have multiple independent models that are individually responsible for uh, their standalone task or a prefer or precisely defined tasks. So these models can communicate with each other uh, through simple uh, means like using APIs, and then uh, this makes these uh, modules like a loosely coupled components 
which performs like uh, uh, descriptive functionalities. So uh, these microser uh, microservices lets us to uh, split our applications into distinct independent services and uh, can be managed by individual groups. So this helps us for uh, building uh, highly scalable uh, applications. So in this project, uh, we have two services like uh, the patient service as well as the appointment service. So uh, the patient service uh, handles all the, uh, the logics uh, related to the patients, all the patient uh, profile details or uh, related to patients thing. And uh, the appointment service uh, has all the uh, details of like, uh, what are the appointments with respect to the patient as well as uh, doctor. Yes, Ashwant, this what, is Sunny here, right? So Ashwant, you are presenting, right? Yes, sir. No. Okay, so I have one question. You have selected, uh, you have made the architecture decision that use microservices. So you might have uh, considered various aspects. How did you come to conclusion that for this particular solution, uh, you want to use microservices, not web API? What was the rationale behind the decision? Uh, so, uh, so microservices is basically we have uh, uh, divided our project in two modules. So uh, these are the major portions. These two services will contain uh, the details about uh, and are totally unrelated to each other. So this is a lightly coupled. So that's why we have used this uh, way. We have divided it with, uh, into two services, patient service and appointment service and mm -hmm. implemented them separately. OK, so I will service can you? OK, so fine. No problem. For each Anymore. microservice, have you implemented multiple APIs or how, how the APIs are exposed from your microservices? So each each service has multiple. Yes, OK. OK, a simple web API would not have helped you. Sir, it would have, but then uh, we were uh, seven people and then we wanted to try and implement microservice to see how it is applicable in the real world. We uh, we were divided. We divided ourselves into two teams and we implemented okay. two different services to see how it is. OK, works. so which means uh, you will be able to appreciate the difference between web API and microservices, right? If need be. Yes, sir. Here we could have used web services, but we also we want to learn how microservices. Fine, are, so. fine. Great. Great. Thank you. So uh, moving on to uh, the rest. Next slide, please. Yeah. So here, uh, rest stands for representation uh, state tensor. So here, uh, this is uh, rest is like a, a set of principles that define uh, how uh, web standards or the URLs or HTTP is supposed to be used. Uh, so uh, in this, by using these rest principles, we can uh, improve our application. Uh, with respect to uh, the scalability and the reliability. Uh, for example, uh, like uh, REST API examples like uh, providing unique IDs for each resource or uh, using standard methods like get, put, uh, uh, delete, and so on. So, and also using uh, accepting data of uh, JSON and also responding it back uh, with JSON data. So, these are a few principles that uh, based out of REST, which we used and implemented in our uh, application. So, Moving on, uh, object oriented. Uh, mm -hmm. will be Can you go back, forward. please? So, in your uh, in your microservices, what are the methods you implemented on the rest? Yes, sir. So uh, you have only get services. Yeah, we have get services and also one post service in in that. And did you also explore uh, securing your rest services? Yes, sir. Uh, you, is your REST service secured or is it a normal HTTP? Uh, is it on HTTP or HTTPS? Yes. HTTP, sir. Yes, HTTP, sir. HTTP, sir. Okay. Okay. Did anyone of you consider using HTTPS? Uh, if not, why? If yes, yeah. why? Yeah. So the question is, did you consider? Yeah, why didn't list? why didn't you consider HTTPS? To be precise, that was my question. 
So as uh, these APIs are consumed by only us, so uh, initially thought of uh, going with uh, the HTTP ones. So we thought okay. we could change it later, and uh, but then we were facing other issues. So we will uh, we will make sure to look into it and implement it properly. Okay. Okay. No problem. While you are giving demo, can you pass on the URL of one API to me? If you don't mind. Yes. Thank yes. you. And you can continue. What do you think? Uh, thank you, Keshwant. Hello, everyone. This is Aditya. Very good evening. So uh, we are using OO programming, object-oriented programming in both in our front end and back end. So uh, why we are using object-oriented programming? There are multiple reasons for this. First reason uh, is uh, because in object-oriented programming, everything is uh, as objects and classes. So object is actually very uh, is a real world entity. So it's very similar to what we are building. So whenever in software development, we uh, build an application. This is for real world users only. So that's why object oriented programming is very useful. There are many other useful, uh, uh, there are many other users as well, advantages, our uh, procedure and other different programming languages. So first is reusability. So here uh, in object oriented programming, we can actually reuse our code. Uh, we don't have to write the similar code again and again. In different programming language, we can do this as well if they are uh, in uh, procedural as well, but they are very complex to do. In uh, object-oriented programming, it is very easy. Uh, the, uh, uh, we can do this because we have multiple relationships here, like is a relation, has a relationship. So we can use that type of relations to use a code, reuse a code. And second, we have inheritance. So inheritance is just uh, in real world, just a parent-child relationship. So uh, what happens uh, if you in procedural programming, what you what you do if you want to reuse a code or want to inherit a feature, you just copy paste. Here you don't need to do that. You just uh, uh, extend a relationship and then you will able to use that functionality. Uh, data hiding is there. Data hiding we can do through a uh, conceptual encapsulation uh, where we can hide through uh, private keywords and uh, so private and we can uh, use getter and setters for uh, uh, for uh, showing and uh, updating the data. And uh, we can reduce our complexity of a problem, and we, it is actually uh, with the help of O programming, the we can actually maintain. Is it's easy to maintain and test our code because uh, in if any time, any time uh, we want to add more functionality, and we can use different principles that uh, uh, for this, and we can use inheritance and uh, different relationships for this. Can we move to next page? Hold on a second. We can. Can you please go to previously? I, so you said that reduced complexity of a problem. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you tell me uh, which uh, attribute think, of your yeah, so concept help you to achieve that? So actually, uh, here, uh, suppose the uh, suppose uh, we want to build a uh, similar application, the CMD. So they are patients and doctors. So their patients uh, has some relationship with doctor. And suppose uh, suppose we have a uh, we have an entity class that's called symptoms. Patients has multiple symptoms. If you want to implement this relationship, we just have to write one uh, one line of code. In patient class, we just have to uh, we have to give a relationship that uh, it has a list of symptoms. But uh, uh, if we want to do this in some other uh, programming languages, uh, which is not object oriented, then it will be very complex to do this. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how so we can do this. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so we can use also design principles and patterns. I will just explain in the yeah, next yeah, yeah, slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can we just move to the next one? Yeah. So design principles and patterns. So what happens uh, when uh, particularly when talking uh, when working with uh, object-oriented programming and software development is told often told that you should follow some principles like everywhere. Uh, uh, if you want to excel or you want to make the best applications, you should follow some principles. Similarly, we have, here we have principle called solid. The solid acronym acronym actually have multi five uh, basic uh, design principles which every developer should follow. Everyone should follow who is uh, involved in the software development. So uh, I will explain one of them at uh, one of the single responsibility principle, uh, single responsibility principle, which means that each classes or each uh, module should only do one thing. It should only be uh, the basic functionality is that it should only be changed when only one thing uh, like it should be only changed for one reason. It could shouldn't be changed for multiple reasons. That is, it should do only one thing and every uh, classes should do their own work. And uh, there are actually some patterns as well. 
so design patterns is actually what happens when in suppose in a procedural programming anywhere we get any error or any any problem we use different algorithms here uh, similarly if we get any so any problems in mostly in uh, in uh, software architecture or uh, software development we can use design patterns so in gang of four it was mentioned that we uh, the basically two two uh, principles that we are make uh, keep in mind to for designing this is uh, always uh, uh, we should code to uh, code to interface not to implementation and the second was uh, we should uh, use composition uh, rather than uh, we should favor composition not use we should favor composition rather than uh, this uh, inheritance so this uh, by keeping in this mind we have few uh, uh, patterns like creational uh, we have some creational we have some structural we have some behavioral behavioral patterns i will mention few of them because factories uh, we have used and uh, there are some like singleton patterns also is there and uh, in behave in structural there is called fly uh, there is something called flyweight pattern uh, so in uh, front end we have used factories and in the back end we have used i uh, ioc container you particularly unity container i will explain that that in uh, code demo so over to you uh, pradyuman thank you aditya good morning good afternoon everyone so uh, coming to unit testing uh, it is basically a software development process in which the smallest testable parts of an application called units are individually and independent independently scrutinized for proper operation uh, benefits for unit testing it provides some uh, like simplifying the debugging process uh, reduces bug fixing costs ensures every system component benefits to achieve a quality product and allow code refactoring and design improvements easily uh, madhu move on to next slide uh, so uh, this is a uh, dumb, uh, one second uh, so this is a code snippet of how we have implemented unit test uh, we have used mock framework for mocking and uh, uh, detailed explanation for this i will give, uh, give it in code walk through so uh, moving on we have done task uh, uh, breakdown uh, using azure devops and divided the parts uh, in in ourselves uh, cre by creating backlogs and everything so now kushal will explain about how we have used some methods to improve performance in our project over to you kushal thank you pradeep uh, good good evening everyone uh, i'm i'm kushal uh, we will be seeing about the performance engineering we have used caching in the backend uh, lazy loading in the front end and track by uh, madhu next slide. so first of all what was the performance issue you found during your initial testing uh, in, in initially so uh, like uh, if we made uh, simultaneous calls to our web api uh, data uh, always it was making calls to the database sir so to reduce the database call uh, and to return the data quickly, we have implemented caching. We have used memory cache, sir, particularly. In uh, so how the uh, flow is? So whenever we, our our controller gets a, a method call, uh, we will be calling a manager. Manager who sits in the domain domain layer of our application. Manager contacts the repository class because we are not exposing our entities database entities to the outside world. We are mapping them uh, we, we have used a uh, auto mapper and we are mapping them into api models and then we are displaying only the information we need to the outside world so we have used memory cache uh, so in cache everything uh, will be in form of uh, key value pairs so whenever a manager method is called we'll first check the cache and if the cache appointments is there uh, is, is there and it will be not null and then we'll be returning otherwise we'll set, set the cache for 10 minutes so this way uh, we have reduced the db calls sir uh, we have reduced uh, web service load and uh, we are able to get the data quickly instead of uh, every time calling a database next slide so it's an application uh, your application is an app right web 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 sorry web application web application sir okay and where are you maintaining this cache in the uh, mem memory sub well, wherever you hosted it is maintained there uh, yes 
Okay. In server memory, sir. Server memory. Fifth memory. Yes. So we have implemented a lazy loading. Uh, so la lazy loading is an optimization technique. So whenever a doctor logins uh, into our uh, web application, so he only needs to see the dashboard so that uh, if he wants to see the patients, then we can load it. By this way, we'll also uh, reduce the time of our application uh, load, uh, like the time to load our application. Uh, so here we can see when we go to the dashboards component, these are the requests made. And when we specifically go to uh, patients, uh, if doctor wants to see the patients, then the request will be made to fetch the module and uh, all the files related to it. Uh, it also saves time uh, of our app and uh, it's very fast. Next uh, slide. So we have also used track by track by is fun uh, function track by function optionally passed into the ng4. It is used to uniquely identify the items. So whenever an item is reordered or uh, deleted or added, this helps. Uh, uh, in maintaining the UI state and we can also enable animations according to track by. So this is how we use track by uh, and there is a function in TS file which will be taking index as well as an item. So we need to return an unique identifier for that item. So in this case uh, we have an appointment appointment has an unique ID. So we are returning it to the ID. So next slide Madhu. coming to uh, security. So we have uh, used uh, Azure AD authentication. Uh, and next one is uh, SNCC. We have used SNCC to find the vulnerabilities in the application. What a SNCC does is it identifies vulnerabilities that could be used by different bad actors to compromise our systems and data. Next to uh, I'll pa pass it to Risha. Over to you, Risha. Uh, thank you, uh, Goshal. Uh, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Rishav. I will be uh, continuing from here. So we have, for error logger implementation, we have used a, a framework like analog and Elma. Uh, basically analog uh, is used to, uh, lo uh, to log the, uh, the errors and uh, exceptions uh, in the code. In the, uh, either we can log it into the database or a file, but in our case we have logged it into the uh, database and uh, Elma is used for uncaught exceptions that uh, most of the time there are Many exceptions that uh, uh, might not be handled or uh, caught during the uh, code implementation. So Elma uh, did that on behalf of uh, developer to to uh, manage that error and uh, exceptions. Uh, moving ahead, uh, we ha we have used uh, Git for uh, uh, Git for our code implementation. Basically, uh, Git uh, is a version control platform which. Uh, help a team of developer to distribute a project among them and uh, each of them will work on their part and according uh, according to the branch so that uh, one one work should not interfere the other developers work and uh, it will help a developer to uh, write their uh, part of code is uh, properly and uh, integrate it uh, later on to the main branch so for generally like uh, the common uh, command that we uh, Used is commit pull post uh, and uh, merging branching uh, in this all thing in the Git repository. Uh, moving on, uh, we so have. What was your branching strategy? What how you manage your branches? How many branches you had? Uh, sir, basically, uh, in uh, Git we had one main branch, okay, and master branch, and uh, it has been created as a like uh, developer uh, in the GitLab. But for uh, before, uh, but in our uh, in our GitHub we have uh, distributed it among uh, the teams the teams were distributed like uh, two teams for the two services uh, patient and appointment so we created uh, two uh, separate uh, master branch in personal github and then we uh, name each branch on the name of the uh, teammate and then we wrote our part and then we pushed and pulled according to and finally when both the services were uh, completed then we finally put into the gitlab uh, as a common integration part that's how we did that implemented it basically so uh, um, moving on, moving on. So we have a uh, programmable uh, CSS as well. Uh, basically, sir, CSS uh, used for styling uh, uh, the UI or the UI uh, part. So we have used SAS, which is a superset of CSS, and uh, it 
we basically uh, implemented for, to get uh, the proper uh, styling and beautification to the UI uh, in uh, look wise. So moving ahead, we have uh, yeah. Uh, moving ahead, we have some fe uh, features that we implemented, uh, like uh, we have a pagination and a search feature. Uh, in the page, uh, in this uh, uh, page of the pagination, uh, top right corner, we have a search box uh, where we can, where doctor can uh, search for the patient with the letter the name start with, and we have a pagination at the bottom right corner uh, because we uh, we have separated the uh, total uh, data into like uh, twelve per page. So according to that, it will be like the pagination has been implemented. Moving ahead, uh, we have uh, we have uh, in the back end we have multiple uh, endpoints and uh, APIs that we used for the uh, services we like patient service and appointment service. So those uh, API and endpoints we are using in the front end. Uh, some of the have been mentioned in the screenshot, and we are using uh, we are getting the data from this API from the back end, and we are uh, displaying the data in the front end on the UI layer. Moving ahead. We have and uh, the code we implemented on the front end is such as that uh, it it it's, uh, it it is responsive. Like the two screenshot uh, shown here is one for like system laptop. Uh, the desk web UI, UI will be like this, and once it comes to mobile, it will be uh, it will change the uh, look like this. So it is like auto adjusted, like responsive. Uh, so yeah, that is one more thing that we have implemented in it. And moving ahead. Uh, the folder structure that we uh, followed for implementing in the front code uh, in the Angular is this like under the source inside that we have app and under that we have a folder CMD where we are we have created uh, three more folders authentication dashboard and patient uh, as per our feature and uh, requirement and uh, then we have uh, further more components and ahead that um, detailed dem demonstration will be in the code walkthrough so the uh, the Overall, this is the folder structure we have implemented. Uh, moving ahead, we have a technology stack that we uh, use the tech shown uh, on the screen as per like C, uh, C sharp dot net, uh, JavaScript, HTML, and so on, Git and all. So moving ahead. Yeah, then uh, this is the QA report after the first release. And basically we had two releases. This is for the first release. And in the next, we have the QA report for the second release. Yeah, this is for the second release and uh, moving ahead. Uh, yeah, so till now uh, we have just uh, gone through the uh, overview or just an info about the features of the project. Now we'll go through the code and uh, walk through of those in the detail. Rishabh, you just said QA report, right? Is it uh, unit testing report or the testing done by some other members? Uh, sir, it is the like uh, release uh, report after like by the DevOps uh, team on the server. Not the unit test. Okay. Do you know the tool name which generates that report? Can you go? Can you go to the report? Yeah, I was looking sonar. for the term. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, sonar we have used. Uh, so, sir, I'll uh, okay. share my screen to uh, just go through the UI uh, part implementation. So here, so uh, sir, as uh, mentioned, we have implemented uh, Azure AD for this uh, uh, login page, uh, which provide a single uh, sign-on, uh, single sign-on to us uh, to the here, and. So once we uh, log into the page, uh, it basically, sir, we have implemented the doctor site uh, with the perspective. So once any uh, doctor log into the uh, site, it will di redirect it to the dashboard uh, that is the appointment uh, uh, page. And here, here we will have the doctor name displayed here and the log logout feature with this uh, with the doctor name uh, here and the there are sidebar which have uh, two feature dashboard and the patient feature. So in the dashboard, we have uh, three cards at the top. Uh, one is today's appointment, active appointments, and cancelled appointment. So here, uh, today's appointment are the count that all the appointment that any patient has uh, requested from uh, the doctor. And these bars basically, sir, uh, shows 
uh, each day data and the blue color bar shows the current day data and uh, these active appointments are the appointment accepted uh, by the doctor on after the request generated by the patient and uh, the appointment which will be cancelled uh, will be uh, uh, will get counted in the cancelled card and uh, here we have these uh, cards uh, patient appointment cards where we'll have uh, these uh, details of the appointment like time and date and what are the problems the patient want to connect uh, to the doctor and uh, once we uh, click on this card so doctor can see the uh, details of the patient and uh, what uh, about the if there, there is any symptom history and appointment history and other details uh, going back so th there will be like uh, and it will be shown for today and upcoming days both and so doctor can uh, view uh, all those and we will uh, have uh, the once that request will be uh, generated by the patient will have the doctor will have an option to accept and reject it okay so after yeah here so once the doctor accept it uh, click on this uh, green one then it card will change a uh, look like this and if the doctor uh, rejects this basically it get uh, removed from the dashboard okay and after accepting it could change to like this and then uh, we have patient uh, one quick observation on this so can you uh, go back to the dashboard so it yes. says uh, 19 appointment today, 9 active, 6 cancelled. So 9 plus 6, 15. Where are 4 other appointment, appointments? Uh, so there are pending appointments also. Yes. Ah, okay. So it's not a total list. Okay. Yes, sir. So, it's actually uh, uh, sum of all three. But like, sir, it is uh, not getting, this all not getting counted. This. Uh, yeah, Rishab, so if you, if Rishab, you accept any one of them, the count should increase then, right? Uh, yes, sir. Should uh, increase. I didn't. Didn't. Okay. Anyway. So it was before working. Two day after release, I think some. some <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I had uh, one other Richard? observation. Uh, yes. This Ananda here. And so you are showing total appointment, active appointment cancelled in the dashboard, right? Uh, Yes, so sir. what is the why you are showing the cancel and what made the decision to go for cancel instead of the pending appointment like where action has to be taken? Sir, it was uh, mentioned in requirements that is how it should be. It was mentioned that whenever you click on cancel, it should get the cancel number should be getting updated and it should be removed from the list. Like from the card list below. But yeah, but like I said, doctor, if you log in, I won't know there are some pending in the queue. Right in the summary, that dashboard is not being displayed. That's why the, my question is: Is there any idea we want to show the dash pending uh, where he has to accept? It can be implemented, sir. Uh, yes, sir. It can we, be. We can, uh, ideally, yeah, it should be there, but uh, it's not in but the. But this is what the mentioned have. by BA. We have asked about all the requirements, and this is what the. We can keep it for the was. further uh, further improvements, sir, in the code. Because sir, anyway, like uh, one once one project have multiple improvement. Uh, coming time. So yeah, yeah, can, understood, yeah, understood. So was it challenge? Like was this information thought about it? Any any challenged the BA itself about this is that what we can do and versus what was asked? Uh, it was so asked. We, were asked, we did ask about a lot of things to be uh, implemented and we were told to uh, do the normal prototype. We just uh, we just wanted to learn how to just mock the entire prototype properly first. And then work on improving it. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. So, sir, shall I move ahead? Uh, yeah, so moving on, uh, we have a patient uh, feature. And so basically, this is uh, this will be the all the list of the patient who try to contact a doctor, either doctor accepted the appointment or not, uh, irrespective of that. And here we have uh, this search feature. Uh, basically, whatever uh, character a letter we will be putting here. So name is starting with that character will come as a suggestion. Okay, and uh, like this. And uh, if the name doesn't exist with the letter, it will be like uh, complete. It will be blank. And uh, then we have a pagination here, and uh, this all will be like in that count of twelve only. It will uh, get change ahead. And here also, like it is, we uh, doctor can move to the particular profile of the patient. Okay, and depending on what uh, to see the more detail like here uh, we have a telephone number and then the inf basic information like age date of birth blood group what allergies patient are having what active issues the patient want to uh, 
discuss with the doctor and the medical problem if any exist with in, uh, with the patient and these are these are symptom history uh, which uh, this is symptom history basically uh, so the about the like uh, active issues and whatever the problem the uh, health issues the patient is, is facing and basically health issues the it has been uh, he has been consulted in the past with the doctor who has logged in uh, and uh, this is the high slow and high feature that we implemented as per the like drop down arrow type and uh, then he, we have a appointment history here for the uh, doctor who has logged in for, for uh, this if this patient has consulted earlier or not the all the detail will be all the appointment history will be here and doctor can short this on the basis of year if, like whichever year the patient has consulted to him the all those year will be come here and it doctor can see year wise if the year wise the what are the appointments the patient has consulted with the doctor and here we have a add description add prescription uh, button so doctor can like uh, if we click on this this uh, pop up will uh, come up where the uh, doctor can search for the medicine with the name like uh, a and whatever like uh, the suggestion will be coming for the medicine and let's we have a uh, and then there is a duration in days uh, the doctor can uh, provide key for how many days like uh, three and all the medic medicine cycle whether it will be in morning afternoon or evening according to that the we can choose or after food or before food uh, the option is there and doctor can add the, some prescription uh, for like it is for pain or it is for uh, fever or uh, anything so like if fever this uh, this medicine is for fever or any description related to that and once we click on add medicine so this will come here uh, with the price of that uh, medicine and the count of the medicine and as the we are go on adding medicine this total and the count will go increasing and uh, the details before food and uh, the medicine cycle will be here and this is a cross button if we click on cross it will get removed from here and let's after adding if uh, after adding if we click on the confirm button Okay, after adding, if we click on the con this confirm button and then this add prescription will get changed to the download option. And uh, once we click on the download, so the uh, details get downloaded in as an Excel service and uh, that uh, patient and uh, yeah, doctor can view the details what is been prescri prescribed for the medicine and uh, other things. So that is uh, all about the uh, work. UI uh, implementation that uh, we have we have implemented here in this uh, two uh, project. Yes, one okay. second, one second. Uh, Go yeah. back to that. Anybody's uh, any profile? Uh, yes. So uh, there are two questions. Like one is in the info section after uh, the age, there is a date field. Uh, yes. Okay. What is that? Uh, date of birth, sir. Date of birth. T zero zero. That is time, sir. Time. Or no. Okay, is this a, are like you have you implemented or is you are using some existing uh, functionality to display this? Uh, so actually, it is uh, in the database with the patient details, the date of birth, and the age we are calculating depending on the date of birth. We could have uh, used pipes to in, uh, improve this. Display only the date. But we will improve this. Yeah, one, one observation. And second, one, like uh, any thought about like you do. This download now prescription got downloaded, right? So yes, sir. when multiple prescription happens for the uh, by multiple doctors, will yes, everything sir. will be together or how it will be only one at a time? No, so actually uh, when we save this, uh, this uh, file, it saved by uh, there's a particular format where we append a name, a patient ID and timing as well for the name. So it will only download for the uh, for the that patient for which particular profile we have opened this. On only one last one, which we it will uh, it will just download the first one. We are not deleting that, so it will just okay. check the first one, whatever the first was added, and it will download that. Yeah, in this case, Aditya as a patient and Ajay as the doctor. Ajay has imagine yeah. Ajay has prescribed four times now in uh, last two, two weeks yeah. different uh, medicines. So when Aditya is downloading or Ajay want to review what are the things he has given, will he give it one or he will get multiple download options here? In our case, it will only download the first one, the first prescription every time because we are not overriding. First, OK, yeah, the first so. means the, uh, yeah, the first prescription one or the first, the first, the first one. Which is, we can implement it for multiple downloads also by mm -hmm. accessing it through Azure and searching for the name. Wait, it's. So what but what is implemented? Somebody saying first, somebody saying the latest. So I just but want this, to implement this one. 
we are just adding the data and we are searching for the name for the id and the first one which will be the like first like is sorted by the time it will get the oldest it will get the oldest one again question back to them anybody validated this logic what uh, is the unit testing is checking or like what is the return type in unit like what is doing unit testing part of it randomly any response is okay or it is has to check by latest one or the latest uh, data or the first data sir in azure blob it is stored in in a list of, of where the recent data is stored on top when we access through download the first one which which will be the recent one will be downloaded and showed sir okay do you have sir, your discuss like for to uh, check uh, what sir i didn't get it you have any test case for this validations functionality uh, yes sir uh, sir will be showing a unit test when we are going through the code walk through sir that will be okay showing. just remember like i just want to be interested to see what is being covered there sir and uh, i would like to add one more thing in dashboard uh, rishav can you go to dashboard oh uh, yeah sure the number wasn't changing because that number is for today sir when we gave when we accepted it it was for another day the number which is displayed here is for the present day only okay but uh, in the dashboard what is point in having today, showing yesterday's appointment yeah, it's not no no sir it is tomorrow's sir. it for, for today and future so today is 15th okay. all the appointments for uh, 15th is showed here if you can see the past appointments are not displayed here for today and only the future only those appointment numbers are will be changed here we can add the data and show our demos mm, no problem fine and all this information whatever data we are showing, seeing here all these are stored in azure blob storage as an excel sheet right no sir only the prescription form is stored in azure the rest is stored in the db data stored in all the database sir or uh, the we have what database, database you're using remote database SQL, SQL, server. SQL server SQL server we are using for creating and uh, we have deployed in the remote server as well uh, on AWS. so so this SQL server is also hosted in azure uh, no. no sir we are using uh, uh, like AWS. basically this is, for database basically so this is the hosted uh, one so we have for the patient as well as the appointment okay OK, so you are not using the managed instance in Azure. You are using uh, in the, uh, as, uh, AWS. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the both services we have implemented, sir, in one uh, in appointment service. What you can see on dashboard is that we have uh, some information about the appointments, like the date or uh, time of appointment, mm -hmm. the which patient has booked it, and the active uh, uh, active issues. So these appointment details are basically saved through appointment service and in the so, common uh, remote database which is aws and what we saw in the patient uh, profile section the patient's de details that is being stored in through patient services and uh, and on the same database sir uh, the remote database so these okay. are uh, all these data are filled by us only and uh, we are accessing those both uh, in our front end uh, yeah. so we don't have any patient login here, so that is the static that yes. it has static here. Yeah. This has been implemented with respect to doctor, uh, and so we have a da patient database uh, in the remote server and uh, the appointment details basically. That okay, be and the the way you are pushing those data to the remote services through the REST APIs, right? Post. Yes, sir. Uh, yes sir, that we will explain in the mm -hmm. walkthrough also, sir. How we have yeah. structured and it. Since you are accessing, accessing the, the yeah, since you are accessing the uh, uh, remote database, uh, yes, it should be HTTPS, HTTPS ideally, right? Because you said it's for internal use, but it is not in your local uh, server. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Risha, you can show the hosted URL. No? Why you are using local host? Uh, no, yes. For the front end. We have this uh, hosted uh, API for the URL. No, the, for the front end, you are using local host, no? Uh, yeah, this for this. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can use hosted one. I'll, I'll show that.
Yeah, please move on. Next. Yeah. So, so uh, after this, sir, we are, we will moving to the code uh, walkthrough and uh, over to uh, over to Aditya for the backend code. Thank you, Rishabh. Uh, so, I will ask permission to share my screen. The code demo. Uh, so uh, here uh, we are actually using onion architecture. So we will be I will be showing how uh, we are using onion architecture here. So our innermost layer is domain layer and in uh, I will explain the uh, domain layer. So in domain layer we have first uh, entities. Uh, this entities uh, sorry this entities are actually the classes or the property the active issues like we have some allergies and patients and all so here this is the uh, classes that we have built uh, these classes are used uh, for uh, creating database we are using entity frame framework code first approach for this so we are using this classes and we have some api models as well because here we have uh, we have made all the annotations and all and we don't want to expose this similar entity to our uh, apis or clients so for that we have exposed uh, we have created some other api models similar to this but suppose here active issues lot of things but here we have only uh, those of those fields those properties which we want to uh, which we want to expose so we are converting this our entities to our uh, api models through using uh, automaper library so we have downloaded that through nugget packages now uh, here we have managers in our domain layer so we have an interface this interface we have created uh, for multiple things first it is giving a contract to our manager to implement only this manager i manager interface and second uh, here in manager there's a dependency so this manager is actually dependent this uh, patient repository is actually dependency of this manager so this actually patient repository is here interface so in our case in patient repository this interface is uh, getting implemented in the data access layer so that's how our uh, data access layer is dependent on domain so uh, the whatever we change here the domain layer is actually dependent and we are controlling this dependency through interface here and in manager in manager we are getting this uh, uh, here we are getting the values uh, through dependency injection uh, particularly we have used unity container uh, i will be showing that in uh, we will be discussing that in api controllers how will we have used that and uh, here we have used caching as well so we have created a memory uh, for caching and uh, whenever in the code whenever we are using here yeah, whenever we are using any functions we have put some xml comments as well so in xml comments uh, it's actually uh, for multiple use uh, this is very special type of comments so here we can whatever we uh, put here the intelligence help helps us to uh, get uh, the details when we hover on our data on our functions and all and the sw swagger we have used uh, in our uh, for our api documentation so it also uh, takes help from this and uh, here whatever we are doing uh, we are using cache first we are creating a unique id with some logics so what we are doing we are creating an id uh, uh, we're checking that if particular id is there because in cache the data is stored as a key value pair because the object cache is in, uh, is uh, inheriting from the key value so uh, what is happening here uh, we are checking for a key id and if the id is there then uh, we are just returning it the id is stored always an object object type so we need to typecast it first to whatever type we, it, it was saved to and then we are using then if it is not present then we are recreating it and we are setting it for some time and putting uh, so this uh, set command is actually take three, three things first is an id uh, which is a key second it should be the what uh, things you want to store it will automatically convert to object type and the third is uh, add object is actually the parent of all classes so we don't need to take care of this and here we are actually giving the time uh, what is the uh, uh, extra, uh, the time for which it should be saved and here we are using automapper for converting because if we do manually uh, suppose in uh, in our case there's a identical patients in patients we have a lot of features but we are not uh, we are not uh, trying to give everything suppose we have some uh, important uh, anything important uh, fields like uh, uh, suppose uh, bank account number or anything we don't want to expose that so we can use api models but if you if you have multiple features if you want to convert it manually it will be very hard 
because you have to write a lot of, lot of codes. So for that, you can use uh, inbuilt library. Uh, we can you can download through uh, the Nugget packages, which is in uh, which is uh, AutoMapper. So it gives multiple classes. For first, we create some configuration. The configuration is created between the source and the destination classes. So this configuration needs to be passed to Mapper class, which takes care of uh, this thing. Uh, what is the uh, what uh, whatever you want to typecast to and when you just uh, when you just uh, want to use this you can just directly use this mapper dot map function to uh, typecast it to particular it will act uh, how it works it actually typecast to same name whenever you find same name like full name is a particular uh, property in both of the classes then it will do it and uh, we are also you can see we are using cache here i will i will show just after cache, we can you can see that we are using async function as well. So what in async we are using that in async we have uh, some functions. So in async we have used async and await. So the type cast the the, uh, the return type is actually a task which is a threat. So uh, what was the issue? Why why we are uh, using this is that uh, some of the time what happens that uh, when uh, when our client is using this particular calling this function and suppose this function takes a lot of time suppose it takes four to five seconds to return though it may may not happen but sometime it might happen so what happens uh, if uh, suppose a, uh, a client clicks on some button and he trying, trying to click on some other button then it will hang this his screen will hang it will not be responsive anymore because we are blocking the main thread so here which we are just returning uh, through await keyword we are just returning and waiting for this thread to complete so it will just a uh, uh, so uh, it will just another thread. So whenever code come here, it will see await and the, it will just come back to here and it will not wait for you. But uh, it will actually it is not actually recommended to use uh, sync await everywhere because there are uh, some cons as well. So some cons I will discuss is that uh, when we build this application, when we check this code, this call, there's a lot of overhead which is added by engines, the build uh, with the compiler. So it actually adds a lot of thing lot of codes are added for making this possible so for this uh, it is should be only used when it is required and uh, similarly we have patient repository which i already explained for which we are controlling the patients uh, uh, the the implementation the data access there and uh, uh, prashant over to you thank thank you Aitya. hello everyone once again i will explain the data access computer data access uh, if the data access layer is uh, near to the database, it follows the onion architecture as I explained. It will depend upon the domain layer. We first install the entity framework using NuGet package manager using the code first approach in which uh, we will create the patient service DB concept. Click on that patient service DB concept. Yeah, here we use the constructor to give the database name as we write in the public patient service db concept colon base where we give the name of our connection and hereafter we use the idb set interface where we use the entity class to convert into the database tables now we have come to the patient repository in the patient repository that implement the interface that defined in the domain layer here we write some asynchronous and synchronous method to fetch the data from the database in the form of and return in the form of i query value. As we have write in we have write more method like we have write six six method in this in synchronous and asynchronous both like get active issues by id get allergies by id. We use return dv dot active issues where a dot arrow a dot patient id is equal to id we have passed the id in the function when the id is match it will return the query in the form of query to our manager where the manager is calling this patient repository same as for we write for the asynchronous method six method also in the asynchronous form yeah same six method we have write for the asynchronous also where we return in the form of task and using the await keyword. If we have to get some time, if we have means uh, we, get, we get stuck or we make the, our responsiveness to make responsive our UI and to fetch the data from the database, if it get late, we use the 
asynchronous method here now come to the patient web api this is the end point of the backend it will send data to our client application when the client application call the api it will give the data to the client application we, here we also use some synchronous and asynchronous method to give the data to our client application here we also install some packages like one of them is swagger we install swash buckle from the nuget package manager it give a nice interface to describe the api and the second thing we use the unity container as we as the aditya explained that for it to tightly coupled we have to declare the new object in our class so for using inversion of control we use the factory method also but here we use the ioc so for ioc we use the container we install the unity go to the unity config here in the when we install the unity config we get that here we define the unity dot variable type new unity container here we have map the i manager to the manager and i patient repository to the patient repository whenever we pass that into the constructor we get the instance of that class we not need to be tightly coupled now the unity container will work that to create the object and will send it to the constructor now the for the error logger for the error we use two things the logger and the error now when for the logger we install two things the nlog and nlog.config for for using to store exception for further references for like in that function it i http action result get all patient we use try catch block to catch the exception here we write a logger dot error function to store this error for our future response responses and for our feedback we use in the future and we will get how to resolve this error so we use the logger to store that exception now come to the nlog dot config yeah here we have some rules where we defines the name of the database logger and where we have to write the database now come to the target here we define the target name is database and what type of this we have to store in the database or file the type is database and where what is the connection string we use we use nlog in our database and we have also created a db insert log store procedure in the database to store that query in that we have right here at the label and call side will be stored after that stored procedure is called there might be some exception which will not be remain uncalled so we use elma to store that error we use error.log error.mail in the bank back config yeah so that below below the http model here we have now there is a name error log type elma dot error log model it will error the log and second thing is the error mail type elma dot error mail model it will mail the error that we have to quote we will show it when we run the api okay thanks everyone hand over to pradyuman it will explain the unit testing thank you prashant uh, aditya i will uh, like to present my screen sure once confirm if it is visible yes please okay thank you so uh, here we have two uh, three layers basically api data and domain uh, so we'll be doing unit testing for api and domain layers uh, in and now coming to particularly to domain layer uh, we are unit testing about the manager because manager is actually contacting with the repository and that is the, the most important implementation we have in the domain layer so uh, inside manager unit test so we have uh, used a mock uh, framework because we can't uh, uh, we should not uh, access the uh, uh, real repository because it will uh, change the data uh, real data so we have created a mock uh, repository for our case because manager is contacting with the repository in the data layer 
So uh, for creating that mock repository, we have used a mock MOQ framework. And now coming to the implementation, uh, this is uh, how we have initialized this mock repository and uh, created a mock appointment repository. So uh, we have implemented a unit test uh, for each methods, uh, like uh, the methods we are uh, having in the manager to contact with the repository. We have tested those methods. For uh, I will show for one async uh, method like here. Uh, there are uh, so like uh, in uh, what I am showing is for appointment service. So appointment service contain uh, one appointment contains a few data like uh, ID uh, status and uh, doctor ID, patient ID status. Uh, so basically, in our case, the uh, what is uh, in the domain entity in the status contains three stages: uh, pending, accepted, and cancelled. Uh, initial stages is pending when the pa patient make request. So, so we will be testing that also. So coming to this uh, first method, get all appointments async. So this method is basically returning all the appointments we have uh, for uh, all the appointments we have in our database. Uh, so I will explain this one. Uh, so in mock repository, since uh, this mock repository doesn't contains any actual data, so we uh, need to create a setup for it. To, so uh, so this should return something for when we call a particular method. Like in our case, get all appointments async. So in this unit testing, I will first show one thing. Uh, like we have created a dummy database for our unit testing. This five appointments we have created and uh, put some data inside it. So using this get appointment, OK, so I'm using this get appointment inside my unit test. Uh, here it is. So when this method is called, it should return the get appointment we have inside this uh, unit test. So uh, now we are creating one manager uh, uh, class, uh, manager object, sorry, manager object to unit test from this mock repository. And uh, we are testing it. Uh, we are testing actually the count that is it able to return the count uh, we have in our database. So in this case we have found five. So we are comparing it with this. And uh, similarly, uh, this is for get all appointment async. And now uh, we have uh, one more method like uh, all appointment uh, by doctor ID. If uh, a doctor ID is uh, provided, then it should return all appointments. Uh, uh, for that doctor, so like in the dashboard when the UI uh, walkthrough was going on in the front uh, dashboard, whatever the appointments were coming, basically this uh, this is what is called inside the manager. This uh, method is called and all the appointments are returned uh, for that doctor ID. So uh, this is how we have implemented uh, for manager. Uh, this is for manager in domain layer. So we have some invalid tests also. Uh, I will show that too. Uh, I have uh, invalid tests for both sync and async. Since we have uh, uh, implemented both the types uh, for async, uh, like uh, when uh, a wrong uh, second. Yeah, like with invalid appointment ID, it should return null. Uh, it should not return anything. Uh, so we have implemented it this way: assert dot is null and the same thing using mock repository. So this one is for domain uh, and manager. Now coming to the API unit test, uh, how we have tested the API. Similarly, like in manager, we were uh, talking with repository, so we created mock of repository. Uh, now in API, we have created mock of appointment manager. We have created mock of appointment manager this time because API is contacting to manager only, not the repository, which is in data lane. So here we have uh, mock repository for appointment manager same uh, the same way we have a uh, dummy data here also get appointments if we go below here we have dummy data so similar thing uh, and now the same thing for uh, we have a get all appointments async method we are testing that here and uh, also we have uh, tested each individual uh, properties of that one by one like dot id uh, and Appointment time, like appointment has appointment time. So we have also tested individually the each property uh, for this. Uh, this is for one service only, appointment service. Similarly, in the patient service, we have also have uh, like uh, more than 50, around 50 unit tests, more than that probably. 
so in there also so this is the appointment service uh, so i have only that part here so in that uh, uh, in there also uh, like patient has uh, many properties 8 to 10 around so they are also for each individual property unit test has been done uh, like for status also similarly and uh, this is all in the unit test like in the similar way all the tests are done so i think i have explained this part uh, moving on to uh, did you Kushal. one quick question did you also run um, any report that says that through your unit test what is the code coverage uh, what sir not able to understand code coverage through your unit test so this unit test how cover how much part of your code did you have any report or did you did you try anything to see check uh, no, sir, I don't know anything about that uh, report, uh, how much coverage, but I can like uh, me. Uh, all, everything is basically major thing is covered, but I don't have any. I don't think we have any report for that. Uh, like in domain, main task is done by manager only. Manager is contacting with repository. So you, we unit tested that. And in API, we have uh, appointment controller. Here we have one controller, appointment controller. So we have created unit test for that. So these were the two major uh, parts of our service. So we tested both. Similarly, in the patient service, there uh, we tested this both only because this were the only major parts. So, so one reason to we not don't test have... repository is that uh, we actually this is entity framework approach we are using. So it's automatic uh, already tested. So we don't need to uh, test that. Yes, sir. We have tested what only these two layers only API and domain, not data layer. Yeah, what I meant to ask was like, for example, you have a test method to accept or reject appointment, right? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, so when you test reject uh, appointment method, uh, it will have some background logic, right? Where you will go and say why you are rejecting this uh, appointment for, and you will have some line of code. So, what I wanted to ask, like, if you test one method, do you know how much classes or how much method it actually covers in the background? Okay. Uh, Ajit, Ajit, you are like YouTube, is it? Uh, sir, your voice is low. I'm not able to hear it. Uh, you are using a Sonar Cube for uh, uh, your projects. Uh, uh, so yes, you sir. Give that the is for QA testing. That's for QA testing, sir. Here we are using MOQ framework for uh, okay. testing. Yes, sir. Like uh, uh, we are not actually uh, contacting with repository here. Like uh, in for the manager unit test, we are not contacting with the repository. So it will not uh, affect, uh, it will not test anything in that, only test the manager methods, methods in the manager. So uh, the question was more about code coverage. How do you measure the code coverage? Do you use Sonar Cube? Uh, I think Venkat mentioned uh, you are using Sonar Cube for uh, the project, right? Yeah, yes, sir, but uh, I don't think we know we have done anything about code coverage. Not heard okay, okay. So this was all about in the back end. Now Kushal will uh, tell from uh, from here. Kushal will tell about the front end implementation. Kushal, you can continue. Thank you, Pratiman. Uh, I'll share my screen. Good morning, everyone. So this is our uh, front end uh, folder structure. So we have uh, SRC and app. So in app we have created a CMD folder which contains all so which contains authentication dashboard and patients. I'll cover about uh, lazy loading, how we implemented it, and then uh, I'll also show this as in programmable CSS. Yeah, coming to app module. Uh, initially, when we load. Uh, we are only we only need to have the dashboard components are uh, to be displayed. So in the app module, we have only the components related to dashboard. Uh, the dashboard component and uh, these are top dashboards in where the stats are being shown. And this is the bottom dashboard component where all the appointment cards are being displayed along with time and accept or reject the appointment. So what we did in routing is so whenever uh, the home uh, localhost or uh, the path home path is coming we are uh, showing the dashboard component and whenever the doctor goes into the 
wants to view the patients we are actually giving a name of card container and whenever the doctor go uh, ticks on patients it will load the children from this module this cmd module and we have declared a cmd we have created a module and the routing for that so in cmd module we are using all the things which in our patients because only we have the three screens uh, so it's very small uh, to do this so we are using all the things which are used in uh, patients that is symptoms uh, card appointment page, patients page patients card dialogue component and prescription i will show through the code walk through and appointment card component profile component so in the routing module when we come to uh, local uh, like root path of card container we will be showing patient space will where we list all the patients uh, uh, in cards and if doctor can uh, opt to click on a particular card and he can go to a profile of particular patient we are giving it in this way and this scan activate is actually an uh, we are using msl js uh, like uh, npm package for uh, uh, authentication through azure so whenever we have this uh, if the if we are only signed in the path will show otherwise it will redirect to the login it will redirect us to login so similarly uh, we are also uh, using programmable css uh, i'll show an use case so here uh, in appointments component uh, we are actually having a mix in and uh, here we are this uh, getting all the data so this is for uh, we can reuse this css anywhere in the application so so in the dashboard component uh, in bottom dashboard css you can actually find it here uh, actually the btn done and btn cancel are the two buttons where we show the doctor if he can accept or reject an appointment so we are using this mix thing here including and the only thing that is differing from this to this is border color so we have used this and we can import a mix in uh, we can import a sas file here and uh, over to you madhu madhu will explain about uh, dashboard and how we uh, approach that how we actually managed to do that and further on. over to you madhu. Uh, hello everyone i'm madhu kiran and i'm going to be explaining about how the dashboard component was implemented yeah, so this is the HTML uh, part of the dashboard. This is the parent component for the dashboard as we saw in the home screen. So this has two child classes, which is the top dashboard and the bottom dashboard. Top dashboard has the statistics of all the data uh, which came up to that day uh, where we had a little misunderstanding, but the uh, data which is displayed on the dashboard is for that particular day. So yeah, that was actually working. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is the top dashboard. This holds all the three uh, data as you can see here. All the uh, one second. Uh, Kushal, can I share just my screen? Right, it'll be easier. Sure, man. Go on. Sorry, I was on mute. Is it visible? Yes, yes, Madhu. Okay, so this is the parent component dashboard. Here, if we can see the uh, appointment doctor name is displayed on the top, and this has uh, two child classes. Uh, app top dashboard and app bottom dashboard here. So through app bottom dashboard is where all the cards are displayed. Since we have implemented a pagination in the front end, we have used a uh, material design to give pagination controls and we send all the appointments one by one, depending on the condition on if they are rejected or pending, as you can see here through these two functions. And then we let this have a look at the top dashboard first. These are the child components. And come back to this. So this is the top dashboard implementation. I have used a chart JS to implement all the charts on the top. So for a chart JS, it has uh, all this was uh, referred from the documentation. 
So there are three charts we uh, we we are displaying one for the total appointments and this is for the uh, appointments accepted and this is for the appointments rejected and these are displayed in the front end uh, like uh, here. Here all the charts are defined and also the CSS classes is also defined for all the charts for the sizing and uh, everything. Then uh, here we have a function to display the length of all the appointments that will be displayed in the front end. So as you can see the chart which we have displayed the third value. Uh, one second, let me just show it to you. OK, so uh, this the middle value is always the present day and this will be the next three days and the past will be the previous three days. So for because of this, we have displayed here as bar three because the same data will be displayed here. And this is for active appointments. And cancelled appointments. And this is the SCSS for the top dashboard. Now coming down to the bottom dashboard, this is a card. Implemented again from material design and bootstrap using both of those. Here the images display the patient name, age, and these are two buttons which are again uh, there is a reject and accept function in the backend. I mean in the TS file which is called from here. And these are the mat icons for chat call and video which can be chosen by us. This is the date and time where pipe is used to display the hours and date and time below it. So this is the TS file where accept and reject functionalities are done. And the toggle form is this is used to toggle it between uh, after we accept it, it moves to uh, this chat call and close in the HTML. Uh, yeah, that is about the bottom dashboard. And the data is again passed from this dashboard. Let me just show it. Yeah, so here we have used output event emitter, which emits the event when we accept and reject to parent two. And this is again received in the dashboard uh, HTML. Here, yeah. parent one and parent two is received again, which is used for the pagination to display the cards properly to reject and accept it. So now uh, moving on to the patient details, uh, Yashwant will be taking over and explaining it from here. Just one or two quick questions. So, yes, sir. UI is fine, but uh, did you did you also get any input from somebody on the UX aspect of the dashboard or the patient view? Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, we got a prototype to be uh, mocked and done it in the UI, uh, except that we just followed the prototype, sir. We weren't. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's and uh, all those uh, call controls like uh, audio or video they are just like uh, as a POC that is only, right? just shown that is uh, given for further implementation sir okay and do you know how you do how you can do implement if you have a next iteration to do uh, for chat yes sir we can definitely look up uh, there are a lot of npm modules and other third party applications which we can add it here and uh, improve it like twilo and other things okay for calls video call Yes, so we can Morning. add uh, all third parties and we can integrate it here. Oh, we can, study we can about learn it. about it, study about it and then do it, sir. Okay. Pretty sure there are a lot more to integrate here, but for now okay. we just implemented it so much. Okay. Now uh, anything else? Sir? Yeah, Manu, uh, which uh, documentation did you refer to uh, build this? Uh, build uh, which one, sir? So that I mean, the prototype. Madhu, so the, the prototype. UI and UI. Okay. Uh, do you want me to show the prototype? Um, which documentation did you refer? So uh, to get to know, like, uh, what all are the possibilities uh, to that you can do? Maybe if you want to integrate video, how would you do it? Where is the documentation that you refer to? So uh, we, we can uh, refer all the third party apps. First, I would search on how uh, what all third party apps are available to integrate it with Angular in the front end or if there's any other requirements to be added in the back end. I'll learn about it and uh, do a little research on it and then implement it, sir. 
documentation we can go to the npm uh, thing and we can look up if there is any other libraries available which are already there to be used there is something we added right uh, you can speak uh, uh, voice uh, recording is is it uh, integrated uh, no sir no, none sir. of the, the three functions are integrated because uh, we okay. were just to done the except that can be done while we're implementing it next time. So for now we're just displaying the icons. OK, no problem. Go ahead. OK, so uh, so next I think uh, Yashwant will be uh, presenting us about uh, patients. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. Um, present on this. So, uh, this is the patient uh, patients page where uh, we'll be having all the uh, list of all the patients. So here uh, we have also had the, the search search feature where we can uh, type a keyword or uh, the letters to search, and also we have the uh, page nation. So uh, coming to the implementation, uh, here we have the uh, code for the front end. Uh, so here uh, on search on 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 change of uh, each letter there we have. Uh, just calling this function where this will filter all the uh, list of all the pa patients and then uh, queue back here uh, into this temp, uh, temp patients list. So uh, by iterating into this, uh, this is the child component with uh, app patient card, which is called. This child component has the code for each individual or this each uh, card code for the HTML and CSS code is held uh, in this uh, child component of patient card. So the, uh, this has this receives the data from the parent component and it, it will display uh, the data like patient name, location as well as the uh, mobile number. And also in this, uh, we also have the patient profile page when we click on each patient card. Uh, and this way we, are, we will be redirected to each patient's profile page where uh, each detail like uh, the info or the allergies, active issues and the symptoms and appointment will be displayed. So here uh, this is the on whole page and these two are the cards like uh, symptom history is one uh, one card and this uh, in the other component and uh, appointment history is also the other card stored in the another component. So that we are integrated in this uh, patient profile uh, component. Uh, here uh, here we are using the, uh, those two child components here and we are passing those IDs. And using services, we are getting the details of uh, respective symptoms and uh, the appointments of that particular patient, and we are able to display it uh, in the patients as well as the, uh, in, the, in the appointments as well as the symptoms card. So uh, this is the code, uh, the HTML code for uh, the uh, the appointments, uh, where uh, we also have we are also able to filter uh, these appointments based on the year uh, of of that particular uh, patient. So we can select uh, multiple years if we are having uh, for the particular patient. OK, uh, actually I have a hard stop now. Uh, so Amit, I will be dropping, but uh, I think good progress. Given the con uh, context and scope you had, you guys had you. I think it's very good progress. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 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 So how about team? How much time? How much more time you need? To complete the session? So maybe another 15, 20 minutes. I think it should it'll be 15, 20 minutes. Maximum, so maximum. OK. I'll just uh, show uh, a few more parts of front end, so then I think it should be done. OK, go ahead. Yes, yeah, I'll just share my screen. Okay. The patient yes, screen was uh, presented by Yashwant, right? So th there, there was a feedback that uh, you uh, you had uh, difficulty facing uh, understanding the Angular concepts and so on. Uh, uh, is it um, now? Are you good with the Angular concept? Because I see you are, you are doing very good work. Um, Ishan showed it very beautifully, like uh, how it's yes, all everything is connected. Yes, so we we referred multiple places and also with 
Alux uh, help with Aluxa. We made this. Sir. Okay, okay. Okay. So, are so, you popular uh, right now, or you think that there is anything uh, uh, we could incorporate in the next training sessions? Uh, I think as of now it is good, sir. Uh, we are yes. able to uh, work on this, sir. Next okay. training sessions can be maybe a little longer, sir, uh, to integrate all the topics within the time frame. So that I would tell. And some more hands on okay. angle also. So this we were working like all weekends also, sir, weekends and all late nights. So we could complete how much ever we could. Thank you for the hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> value for uh, your career. Uh, you know, okay. Saturday was a work uh, training day or it was for you to work on projects? No, sir, it was off, but we were working on the projects. It Only was, us that three Sunday was off, sir, but still we were discussing on teams a uh, whole like up to 11, 12. To yeah, that's that. okay. it's like, yes, that's one time of the beginning of the career. You may have to learn, so that's the time. The key yes. like you had Saturday of some few courses before were also, Saturday was also training day, so they had had to stretch. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, sir. So I will be uh, explaining about the form. Okay, I will, I will be explaining about the dialog components, sir. There, where we add prescriptions and give in the data to uh, to convert into Excel and store it in Azure Blob and to retrieve it. I will, I will be explaining about that part. So this is the child component. OK, I'll just start off with dialogue. So this is the dialogue component where the dialogue is displayed. Again, this is from. Uh, uh, th one second. Yeah, this is from Matt dialogue. This is from Angular Material Design. So this is just a normal dialogue component inside which there is a child component of app prescription form. This is the prom form which we have defined here. Here uh, we have two parts, which first is the complete form to enter. It's a reactive form where we have entered all the da uh, data to be entered. And the second part will be the card where the total and everything is displayed as we saw in the demo. Uh, now from here, once we click on confirm, let me just show you. OK, so here from add prescription, this is the form which is being displayed in the child component of the dialog form. So once we click on confirm, let me enter some details. Close in. Add medicine and like another. Medicine for afternoon. OK, now when we click on confirm it turns into download uh, that part I will be explaining here. So. Here once the button is clicked, the confirm button. We have an add to Excel function run. So add to Excel function here we have a predefined name, so this takes in the uh, predefined the project name and the ID and it gives it appends to the local date and the time of the string. So this string is passed to our Excel service, which is again defined. I will explain that shortly uh, to an exported as uh, Excel file with this medicine list and XX is the file name where uh, new medicine list is the object of medicine list caught from the form. So let us go to Excel service and have a look. So in Excel service, this is where we are converting all the uh, the object to when uh, we have added it. We are adding it in an Excel file. So this is uh, done by installing XLS module uh, and we have added it in the NPM module and we read, we went through the documentation and we found out this is how it is implemented. So here we had Excel buffer and Excel uh, file name to save as Excel file, which is another function under it. So here under this we have another function called upload blob. This is another service which we have implemented. Let me show it to you. Here, Azure Blob Storage Service. Yes. So in uh, this service, this we also saw the screenshot in the PPT. So here we have uh, multiple functions like upload blob. This is to list all the blobs, delete blobs, and download blobs. These are gotten by the account and the SAS token. 
here we have to add and receive the blob service client through that again we had to with the doc with the help of documentation and source help we could uh, make this uh, and get blob client we got the blob client through this we got the data uh, how we got to know how to download it and list it and upload it sir so uh, from this we use the upload blob here the content type is a file but uh, if we see here the content type is uh, sorry description form and add to excel here the content type is a blob in excel service we had to typecast it to file thing and uh, upload it the uh, upload blob we gave the data directly from the excel and the file name and it is push sir set data and check data is again uh, defined in service this is used to filter out all the files and get the files which we require to download like the latest file uh, down, uh, we, we are downloading the latest file for every patient using the patient's id as we have used it in the name of every prescription form here we have defined the id in the name so we use this to retrieve the patient's thing. The latest file will be uploaded. We can also implement downloading multiple files, but that should be uh, done using the local date and time string. We have to search through it and download it. Uh, I think th that will be it. Sir. That is the main functionalities we have done. Uh, can you please show us the um, requirements how uh, you showed Azure DevOps board, right? So. How are your requirements and uh, how did you refine them? What uh, like the like prototypes, sir. Um, yeah, I think I saw Azure DevOps board. Uh, OK, let me just uh, show the. Pro so user stories are some kind of. Madhu, are you speaking? You are on mute. Sorry, sir, I was talking. Yeah. OK, so this was the prototype given to us, sir. Uh, this is how we were asked to implement it. Um, here again, once we click on uh, confirm, this had to turn into this. This was the dashboard and uh, patients was. Uh, again, the list of patients, Peter Thanos. It is all implemented in the same way. And for prescription history, we changed this into. Uh, this part, sir. This was done. And the confirm Excel part was uh, done by us. So how did you track your work? Uh, all the work that you are doing? Uh, did you put it in uh, as create create tasks against the user stories? So we created tasks and we divided among ourselves and we started doing it, sir. And from Git we started pulling and upload uh, and again we were also helping others with other works and we were pulling from Git, change, making changes and pushing it back. <clears throat> Madhu, okay. did you use uh, Azure DevOps or no for managing this project? Uh, yes, sir. For uh, we had that uh, task breakdown in the Azure. Uh, yeah, I think that is what. Uh, yeah, that our, is why we use Yeah, uh, that is what. Backlog thing we have uh, used. Uh, can you yeah. show us the backlog? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just share, sir. Okay. Or this one, sir, you are asking. Uh, Correct. Yes. So, like, we have this breakdown, sir, like as a feature and then backlog and then task kind of thing. We had this. Okay. Did and you use prints as well? Or, um, or it's uh, simple. Sorry. Can you go to the backlog on the left? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Yes, 
or uh, go to sprint one. OK, so how did you track it? Like, uh, okay, did you? Uh, these are all PVIs, is it? Uh, these are all uh, user stories, is it? Uh, yes, sir. It is like all the features that we have to implement in the front end, and for that, what is the required in the like back end? Basically, the features we all like unit testing and all like for our domain layer, we have to implement. Then we implement manager class, everything like sir. Alma for monitoring and product testing. So all those we have mentioned here. So I got Can you please click on the arrow against uh, number eleven? Any reason why uh, tasks were not created for other uh, user stories, or you didn't have time? If that's the case. It's okay. Uh, so we created uh, like task also for others also. Like okay, okay, no problem. Yes, sir. We so the end logging was just very straightforward, sir. It was just adding yes, in. only complex thing we created this task, sir. Yeah. Okay. So did you assign to different people within this or how did you do that assignment? Uh, we equally divided among all seven sets of tasks and all. First, basically we have been divided in the team and each team has been divided uh, with the features. Mm -hmm. And then as per the requirement, we and then we divided the work equally among all and we implemented. Uh, but sir, moving forward, we got uh, uh, we were getting errors and all were contributing to yeah, everyone was contributing irrespective like, of the team and work assigned. Yeah, yes, so are, uh, whoever was free at that time, everyone was contributing everywhere. Yeah. OK, within this uh, backlog or as, uh, task assignments, can we see the names? Can you open one? Uh, sure, sir. Yeah. So uh, whom it has been assigned? Uh, like sir, the demon was here, okay. and then for the different tasks uh, here, like we have uh, the other people have also contributed for each task. We uh -huh. have a name for that also. I look so. In initially we were divided by services, yeah. sir. Uh -huh. We have, we helped each other. Whoever is facing difficulty. So the BAD is divided is into two teams for patient services and uh, appointment services for the back end. Then we no. saw. Uh, we, like sir, we have managers for the uh, we have implemented man managers for the back end layer. So overall, like uh, we have this task and all like sync method and uh, for different type of like getting a patient detail allergies and then a sync method for each of them. So all these are the backlog under manager that methods we have implemented and the name assigned to the implementation of the method. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And again, inside each backlog, we have certain methods also like implementation and understanding requirement. So we have those also. So basically, sir, everyone contributed in the part that uh, like combining everything. So yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, anything else that's also that's not thing. That is it from me, Sudhir. Yeah, any other questions from our team? So thank you team. Thank you uh, Alok and Venkat uh, for the your training, detailed training and all. I think it was well presented as a you know, consolidated team. And uh, we will capture feedback from our uh, technical panel also. And if there is anything, we'll share. But uh, it's well done. Overall, it's well done. OK, so thank you, Sudhir thank and uh, teams. I think uh, sorry for I think uh, we are just uh, dragged for extra minutes. I think maybe this might have hampered your uh, other meetings. Uh, but yes, I'm um, definitely uh, 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 looking forward to your feedback. So that definitely if anything is required, definitely we will uh, incorporate and we will uh, improve on that. Yeah. So sure. and also I thank you the team. So guys are uh, definitely the, the whole credit has to go to for you guys here. Uh, definitely like uh, day and night you just uh, really just put an effort and you took a seriousness and you are committed and uh, you took a ownership and you completed. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I think Thank it will you, help sir. them uh, to easily onboard to the uh, teams, right? Easily. The projects. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have done yeah. very good job. All the things, uh, uh, layering the application, uh, implementing design okay. patterns and uh, segregation of concern, it was uh, done very well. So, mm -hmm. and uh, most important thing is helping each other uh, without uh, uh, restricting yourself with your own domain. It's a very important thing that you have to follow in your Great. Good yeah. job there. Yeah, Great good team. collaboration. I can see the collaboration and how while presenting also how they are handing over to each other. So it was good. Well presented. Yeah, well presented. I think uh, whatever you have made efforts, you are talking about Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, once a while it happens. Um, you see more in real life yeah, than the training because you have come from uh, just uh, out of college and you have got that. But you will see definitely more uh, sleepless nights uh, during real time, maybe with uh, any IT organization. It <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that is not regular. Like just to be clear. It will not be regular. Yeah. On need basis. That's again we have to take it out. What if something happens and we have to have the deployment completed within week or 15 days because that's a high mm -hmm. priority production ticket. Yeah, so right. Yeah, that's what we will try to test in uh, training as well. <clears throat> They so they used to that. They won't get any surprises because they already seen from last 15 days. Like I was saying it. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah, I think uh, see people uh, when they are putting effort during training, definitely they will put in the real time projects uh, without asking. Also, and yet they know their uh, contribution. They will realize that definitely. That is true. Well done, team. All the best. I think uh, tomorrow uh, Rakesh will connect. Uh, so what, did you get all the information for tomorrow? Do you need no, any sir. information? Yes, sir. We need to know at what time it will it will be incorporated. Yeah, okay. okay. And all like how the onboarding process will be there. Like what? Yes, we only know yeah. that sir tomorrow will be onboarding will take place. That's all we know. Okay. I'll I'll ask uh, Rakesh to connect you through. Uh, I think you have some WhatsApp group, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'll ask Rakesh to connect with you and update the things. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Okay, sir. So, all yes. the best uh, for you uh, for tomorrow. And if there is anything, uh, uh, please uh, respond to Rakesh and get clarification. If you need any other people, I think Ananda myself will be available in addition. Okay. Yes, at the end, yes. formal welcome again, once more again into projects now. Real time activities. Uh, okay, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You all. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yes, sir. Nice to you. Bye bye. Thank you. Baby. Thank you, Sudhir and team for making this fitness uh, and uh, having a presenting for the things. So thank you so much and also I wish you all the best for you guys. So I have a great career. So keep in touch. Uh, thank, thank you, you Venkat sir for all the. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank, you sir. thank you very much sir. All the support. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you all the best guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rajasthan. Thank you, Pastor Rajasthan, also for helping in that. Thank you, Pastor Rajasthan. Thank you, sir. All the best. Yeah.